Nigeria's political system is what it is now as a result of the fight won by our forefathers to free the country from the shackles of the colonial masters who formerly dominated it. Benjamin Inamde Azikwe, also known as Zeke or the Great Zeke of Africa, was one of the earliest heroes. He became the first president of Nigeria. He served from 1963 to 1966. Despite being exposed to the injustice of colonialism and discrimination at a young age, he was a statesman and political figure who was known as the father of Nigerian nationalism and was considered to be one of the key forces behind the country's independence. Azikwe was an avid reader and a prolific writer. He established a name for himself in the professional world by running several newspaper houses including the West African Pilot, and he later founded the Zeke Group of Newspapers. He was able to spread radical nationalism and black pride through his editorial writing, which caused some concerns in the colonial community. Consequently, he pushed an agenda in favor of African nationalism. He condemned the prevailing colonial system, including racial discrimination and limitations on Africans' freedom of speech. Azikwe was born on November 16, 1904, in Zungeru, which is now the state of Niger. His father, Obededom Shukwe Meka Azikwe, was a clerk for the British administration of Nigeria and frequently traveled for work. Rachel, a member of an Onishareu family, was Azikwe's mother. He was able to communicate in Aosa at a young age, but at the age of eight, he was moved to Onisha to live with his partner grandparents. Under their guidance, he learned Igbo and subsequently English, and his time in Lagos exposed him to Yoruba. Azekwe's schooling was not stable and he constantly changed school due to circumstances. His former schooling started at Trinity School, a Roman Catholic mission school, and Christ Church School, an Anglican primary school, where he excelled in academia and sports. Moreover, he attended the Wesleyan Boys High School, now known as Methodist Boys High School, Broad Street, Lagos. In 1918, he returned to Onisha to complete his secondary school at CMS Central School, and in 1920, he started his tertiary education at the Oak Padel Training College in Calabar. Determined to advance his education, Azikwe traveled to the United States, and in 1925, he enrolled at Stora College, a historically black institution in West Virginia. He spent one year at Stora. At the same time, he was undertaking an intensive correspondence course in American law and procedures. Briefly, he spent some time at Howard University in Washington, D.C., before settling at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, where he earned his undergraduate degree in political science. He edited the Columbia University Summer Session Times. This was his first step in publishing an experience he underwent while he was working as a part-time teaching assistant at the institution. Thereafter, he earned a diploma in journalism. Later, he received a master's degree in political science from Lincoln University and a master's degree in anthropology from the University of Pennsylvania. Zeke returned to Africa after graduating in 1934 and declined an invitation to pursue a doctorate. Upon his return to Africa, he accepted Alfred Ackerson's offer to become the first editor of the African Morning Post in Accra, Ghana. He was granted full control of the publication and hired a significant number of its employees. Azikwe espoused extreme nationalism and black pride in his column, The Inside Stuff by Zeke, which alarmed some colonial elites and on top of that, he supported a pro-African nationalist platform while serving as the editor. After publishing an article titled as the African a God, Azikwe was put on trial for sedition. On May 15, 1956, he was convicted of the charges and given a six-month prison term, but he was ultimately exonerated on appeal. In 1937, Azikwe made his way back to Lagos and established the West African Pilot, a newspaper outlet he used to address Nigerian nationalism and accentuate colonial exploitation. 
His efforts were uttered on July 8, 1945, but he resumed in August on account of his unwavering support for the general strike organized in June 1945 under the leadership of Michael Umodo against the colonial administration. During the strike, he went into hiding in Onisha for security reasons after he raised the alarm about an assassination plot by unknown individuals working on behalf of the colonial government. Numerous Nigerians believed the assassination story, but the allegations were debunked by others, who believed that he made them help to raise his profile. And truly, as he quaced popularity and his newspaper circulation increased during this period. To preserve Azikwe's life and his self-government beliefs, a militant youth organization was founded in 1946. Azikwe disagreed with the British governor of Sir Richard's suggestions to amend the Clifford Constitution of 1922. This was inclusive of adding more African nominees to the Legislative Council. The reason is that those nominated will be supporters of the colonial government and won't actively pursue self-governance. The lack of support for the progression of Africans to top civil service positions was another reason for the opposition. To spread the word about the party's concerns and generate money for the UK protests, a nationwide tour was launched. Azikwe became the NCNC's leader after Abel Macaulay, the party's president, passed away while on tour. Before leading the team to London, he visited the US to find support for the party's position. Azikwe, Fumilaya Ransom Kuti, and others made up the UK delegation. To deepen awareness of their suggestions to the 1922 constitution, they paid visits to the Colonial Bureau of the Fabian Society, the Labour Imperial Committee, and the West African Student Union. The team sent their recommendations to the Colonial Secretary, but not much was done to alter Richard's proposals. To postpone the implementation of the Richards Constitution, Azikwe ran for one of the legal seats in 1947. Incidentally, Azikwe was involved in the Nigerian Youth Movement NYM, the country's first nationalist group. After some time, he quickly split the movement along ethnic lines. He resigned from the NYM in protest of alleged discrimination against Ijebu members and Igbos. Politically speaking, he co-founded the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons NCNC, in collaboration with Albert Macaulay in 1944. In 1946, he was appointed Secretary General of the NCNC and the following year, he was chosen to serve in Nigeria's Legislative Council and in 1951, he rose to the position of opposition head in the Western Region's House of Assembly. Azikwe relocated to the Eastern Region in 1952 and was chosen as its chief minister before eventually becoming the region's premier in 1954. He introduced the legislation in 1955 that resulted in the establishment of the University of Nigeria, Unsuka, in 1960. The leaders of the other two major parties, Obafemi Awolowo of the Action Group and Amadou Belu of the NPC, partook in the Nigerian delegations to London under the leadership of Abubakar Tafawa Baliwa, the federal government's premier and the MPC's vice president at the time. Baliwa was appointed federal prime minister in 1960 after an MPC-NCNC coalition won the national election. Azikwe accepted the role of governor general while Belu and Awulowo continued to serve as the premiers of the north and the western regions respectively. His longtime friend and NCNC colleague, Michael Opara, assumed leadership of the eastern region. Azikwe was elected as Nigeria's first president in 1963, the year the country was declared a republic. Azikwe and his colleagues were removed from office as a result of the military takeover on January 15, 1966. He served as a spokesperson for Biafra and an advisor to its leader, Chukwe Emeka Odumegu Ojuku, during the Nigerian Civil War. Additionally, he served as the Chancellor of the University of Lagos from 1972 to 1976 in the wake of the war. In 1979 and 1983, he ran unsuccessfully for president under the aegis of the Nigerian People's Party, which he joined in 1978. After a military coup on December 31, 1983, he ended his political career. Azikwe, as a prolific writer, championed his philosophy of African liberation, Zikism, which identified five concepts for Africa's movement towards freedom, 
which are spiritual balance, social regeneration, economic determination, mental emancipation, and political resurgence. His publications include Political Blueprint for Nigeria, 1943, Zeke, 1961, My Old Sea, an Autobiography, 1971, Renaissance Africa, 1973, Essentials for Nigeria's Survivor, 1965, The Future of Pan-Africanism, 1961, Themes in African Social and Political Thought, 1978, Restoration of Nigerian Democracy, 1978, Ideology for Nigeria, Capitalism, Socialism or Welfareism, 1980, History We Vindicate the Just, 1983. Azikwe received the customary distinction for Mayor of Notable Achievement when he was inducted as Inna Yelugo into the elite Agba Lamze Society in 1946. As the Ozizian Yobi, he rose to the position of second rank Red Cap Chieftain in 1962 and he became the first rank hereditary Red Cap nobleman in 1970 when he was enthroned as Owele Osowa Anya. He was nominated by Queen Elizabeth II to the British Privy Council in 1916. Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, GCFR, the highest national honor was bestowed upon him in 1980. He was awarded 14 honorary doctorates by university in Liberia, Nigeria, and the United States. In 1990, Lincoln University created a professorial chair in his name. Azikwe's portrait appears on the 500 Nera note and he was a litany of locations named after him. This is inclusive of the Inamdi Azikwe International Airport in Abuja, the Inamdi Azikwe Stadium in Enugu, and the Inamdi Azikwe University in Oka. He is the only person whose name has appeared in a democratic constitution, namely Nigeria's Republican Constitution of the 1963 which Prime Minister Tafawa Balewa proposed as an addendum to the independent constitution of 1960. Azikwe is well known for being one of the key figures who propagated the concept of Nigerian nationalism and called for the creation of the Federation of Smaller States because he thought that would stop the inter-ethnic conflict. At the University of Nigerian Teaching Hospital in Enugu, Azikwe passed away on May 11, 1996, after he protracted illness.